Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC moveset guide video. For those of you who are new to the channel, I know a lot of you are here to learn competitive Pokemon since Sword and Shield have just come out. I'm sure there are a lot of people looking to get into it. So I've created this channel. I mean, I made it years ago, but I've been uploading uh, specifically for the purpose of teaching VGC to other people and getting them involved in the community. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel. I'd really appreciate it. It helps me grow and it helps the community grow. But yeah, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at one of the coolest Pokemon from this generation. I feel like I've said that for just about every Pokemon that I've covered so far. It's, it's just that there are so many cool ones. Um, but today we're going to be taking a look at Dragapult. I know a lot of you guys wanted a guide on this. Speaking of which, I'm going to be out of town all of next week, so I'm pre-recording a lot of these moveset guides and a lot of uh, VGC laddering sessions. So if you guys want a specific Pokemon covered, be sure to comment it in the, so in the comment section down below um, and try to do it as soon as you can because I'm going to be recording all these tomorrow and the day after. But yeah, uh, Dragapult, a really, really cool Pokemon. Dragon Ghost is pretty rare. Uh, I believe the only other Dragon Ghost type we have is Giratina. So that's pretty interesting. Now, where this Pokemon goes from being cool to being absolutely insane is its stats. 88 HP, nothing really cool. Uh, 120 attack, that's actually really solid. Uh, it's about the same as Grimmsnarl, which I already said is a pretty big threat in the format. Defense is 75. Once again, pretty low. Special attack 100, usable. Special defense 75, kind of low, but 142 speed. That automatically makes those 100 special attack and 120 attack stats way more threatening because there are very few Pokemon that are going to be able to naturally outspeed this. And any Pokemon that will outspeed it otherwise will need to be running some kind of choice item or have Tailwind or Sticky Web support. Or not Sticky Web, but um, Icy Wind or Electro Web support. But that's the thing about this Pokemon. It has a whole bunch of really, really good abilities. Its abilities are what just top it off to make it absolutely broken. It has three abilities. It has Infiltrator, which bypasses Substitutes and Light Screen. It has Clear Body, which doesn't allow the opponent to lower the stats of this Pokemon, whether that be its attack stat, its special attack stat, or its speed, anything like that. This Pokemon's stats cannot be lowered. And finally, it has Cursed Body, which is admittedly the least useful of all these abilities, but still not that bad. Uh, if a Pokemon uses a move against this Pokemon, there's a chance that that move will be disabled which is really useful because let's say you manage to tank a Shadow Ball from another Pokemon. You can, if uh, Curse Body activates, you can pretty much guarantee, yeah, they're not going to throw another Shadow Ball at me or for that matter, another Ghost move because it's very rare for a Pokemon to run two Ghost moves. Uh, usually Shadow Ball or just Shadow Sneak, whatever set they're running. There's usually only one of them unless you're Mimikyu. But yeah, uh, I have a couple of sets for this Pokemon. I have four. Uh, three of them, they're not three of them. Two of them are pretty standard, but... One of them is something that I came up with myself that I think is really, really cool and something that people are sleeping on in this format. So the first set we're going to be covering is Modest Choice Specs. Now, this thing has access to a lot of decent special moves. Honestly, if it had access to a Poison move or, an, or a Ground-type move, uh, this set would be absolutely busted, but it's not. Uh, I decided to go with a Modest Nature because you're already so fast that um, you can go ahead and throw the plus special attack nature on there instead of a plus speed. There aren't things that are going to be outspeeding you normally, so you're pretty fine. Anyways, the moves are Shadow Ball, Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, and Fire Blast. Now, Shadow Ball is, of course, a very powerful ghost stab move. It's 80 base power, has the chance to lower special defense, and will hit a lot of things in this format pretty hard considering it's coming off of that pretty okay uh, 100 special attack stat and is boosted by the choice specs. We, of course, have max special attack investment on top of that and max speed to make sure that we're sort of a glass cannon, but not just any glass cannon. We are a glass stealth bomber. Look at this thing. It's literally just a stealth bomber. Uh, Draco Meteor is the most powerful dragon type move in the game. I'm pretty sure that the most drag powerful dragon type move that's available to Dragapult. Uh, Thunderbolt is really nice coverage. It's going to allow us to hit flying types for super effective damage along with uh water types so that's really cool now fire blast is over flamethrower i'm running fire blast over flamethrower for one reason ferrothorn is going to be one of the most annoying pokemon to deal with in this format there are so few pokemon that are able to hit ferrothorn while we do have arcanine while we do have or whatever it's called um cinderace and other fire types in this format not a lot of them are actually going to be vgc viable 
So having fire coverage moves is one of the best ways to do with Ferrothorn. And Fire Blast has a little bit more power than Flamethrower, so uh, with that choice specs, you might be able to Oko it in rain, uh, depending on what set they're running. And if they, you know, if they manage to get up the rain after uh, taking a little bit of damage, you can pretty much guarantee that you are going to KO them. The only downside is you have slightly lower accuracy at 85, I believe. So you have to be careful with it. Um, it might be safer to hit him with a Shadow Ball if you know it's going to KO, uh, just to make sure that you don't end up risking a miss with your Fire Blast. So play those very carefully. Uh, something to note about the Choice Spec set, though, and any Choice set for any Pokemon going into Sword and Shield. Now that we have Dynamax as a mechanic of the game, you're able to lock yourself into a move. Let's say I lock myself into Shadow Ball and start throwing those off. And a Pokemon that I don't want a Shadow Ball comes out. But I also don't want to switch into anything because I know I'm going to lose a Pokemon. This Pokemon has the option of Dynamaxing and being able to switch up whatever moves you want. Even though you're choice locked, you're able to pick whatever Dynamax move, whatever Max move you need to. You could use Max Wormwind, Max Flare, um, Max whatever it's called, Phantasm. And then as soon as you're undynamaxed, you can lock yourself into another move. That's absolutely insane. That's, that's why this Pokemon has so much potential to just clean up in this format. Just absolutely wreck house. And that's only the first set. We have a couple more sets. Uh, this next set that I'm going to be covering is my own. And this is going to be Substitute Disable Dragapult. We're going to be running a Naive Nature. Uh, and that's because while this Pokemon has a really nice attack stat, uh, it, I, I really didn't see a point in running Phantom Force on this because it will take two turns to do it. Uh, this set will allow you to, oh, I just realized that I have a focus sash on that. Ignore the focus sash. That's supposed to be leftovers. That's just my bad on the, on the, uh, layout. So it's, it's actually leftovers. And the reason that we're running this is because substitute will allow you to get behind a substitute, not take any damage. And if they decide to go for like a sucker punch into you because they're scared of getting hit by a ghost move or whatever, and they know you have low defenses, you'll be able to bypass that entirely. You could even get a substitute up using a uh, fake out support. And uh, you're, you'll be able to disable whatever move you want. Along with that, this is one of the fastest Will-O-Wisp users in the game. So you can burn whichever physically attacking opponent is really scary to this Pokemon. Uh, you can burn some dark types like Grimmsnarl. Or uh, you could even burn a Ferrothorn if you don't want to take as much damage from Gyro Ball. Uh, Dragon Claw is just really nice Ghost Stab. And we're running Shadow Ball over Phantom Force because uh, with a Naive Nature, we can run a mixed set. And that way, we, we won't have to take two turns to actually throw off a ghost type move however if you do decide to go with phantom force you do have that added benefit of being immune for a turn so it sort of acts like a protect and you'll be able to get uh more leftovers recovery with that once again not focus ash that would make no sense with substitute that's my bad uh but yeah this is honestly i think a set that i want to run uh, if i ever build a team around dragapult which I, I think i intend to in the near future but yeah I, I let me know what you guys think about this set in particular i think i'm gonna run it for a little bit the next set I have for you guys is Dragon Dance. This is the set that I meant to put Focus Sash on. Now, because Dragapult is so naturally fast and there are very few Pokemon that are going to outspeed it, I didn't see much of a reason not to run an Adamant Nature on this. It'll just help you boost up the damage from your physical attacks. Um, and with a Dragon Dance, you're going to be outspeeding most things in the format anyways. And that Focus Sash will help you guarantee getting uh, the Dragon Dance off and outspeeding everything. Uh, with 120 attack, a lot of your move is going to be doing some pretty decent damage after that Dragon Dance. Dragon Claw or Dragon Darts? That is a decision I'm leaving up to you guys. While Dragon Claw is nice, immediate, 80 base power, uh, single target damage, Dragon Darts is also nothing to pass up. Dragon Darts has a couple of really cool mechanics that I was looking up and I saw on Twitter from NailsOU, who is a very uh, successful VGC player. Dragon Darts will actually, if... Let's say a Sylveon switches in on Dragon Darts. Uh, because Dragon Darts target each of your opponents once, if an immunity like Sylveon switches in for one of those opponents, the other dart will automatically redirect into the opponent that isn't immune. So if you decide to go with Dragon Dance Dragon Darts, you're going to be dealing a lot of damage. Each of those darts is 50 base power. So if it redirects into the opponent that is uh, immune to, or that isn't immune to that attack, that means it's a 100 base power dragon type move. That's 20 base power more than Dragon Claw, mind you. That's actually really insane. There are a couple of other really cool interactions that Dragon Darts have, but I don't want to get into the specifics. That'd be a whole video on its own. Phantom Force is honestly 
I, I really don't like Phantom Force and doubles. Your opponent can switch, but, uh, you know, you kind of need a stab move on this Pokemon. It's really hard to uh, get away without a ghost type move. If you want to, you could run, um, what is it called? A, a plus attack minus special defense or physical defense nature and just put Shadow Ball on there instead and just have Dragon Claw or Dragon Darts be your only physically attacking move. Uh, but I, I feel like you get the most bang for your buck with Phantom Force here, unfortunately. I really wish I had a Shadow Sneak, but it doesn't. Um, but yeah, Phantom Force is a really powerful ghost type move. It goes through Protect, so even though it's a two target or a two turn move, you won't need to worry about uh, them protecting on it. It'll always go through. Uh, the only issue comes is uh, if they have some kind of ghost resist, like a dark type or a ghost immunity, like a normal type in the back. That's the only issue with it. Uh, other than that, there's you know it's really just the downside of taking forever to throw off one move. Uh, Protect is just there because. Uh, you might want to preserve that Focus Sash in situations where you don't think it's safe to Dragon Dance or throw off an attack, and because it's one of the best moves in the entire game. Protect might actually be the best move in VGC in general. Uh, I doubt there are many people that would disagree with that. The final... Oh no, I have... Yeah, I have one more set for you guys. The final set I have for you guys is a Choice Man set. While this thing doesn't have very good physical coverage, uh, there are a couple of moves that I think uh, he can use a Choice Man with pretty effectively. Now, Dragon Claw, once again, it is a very powerful Dragon-type move. Uh, you'll be able to throw it off with your base 120 attack. But in Adamant Nature with a Choice Band, uh, you get 1.5 times attack immediately. And with Clear Body, they cannot intimidate you. That's something I actually meant to mention in the previous one. We're running Clear Body because, you know, your stats can't get lowered. You can't get slowed down. You can't get intimidated. It's absolutely busted uh but yeah dragon claw is going to be doing a lot of damage coming off that 120 attack stat with the choice band psychic fangs is nice coverage because you'll be able to hit fighting types for super effective as well as poison types uh and break any screens that come up psychic fangs is actually a really cool move it functions like uh brick break in that if they go for a light screen reflect or the cursed aurora veil aurora veil is just absolutely busted if you ask me it's hard to get up but once it's up it's so hard to beat um You'll be, you'll be able to break that in one turn. So that's really nice. U-Turn. This thing is such a fast Pokemon. U-Turn is going to be so good. Because you can lead off with this Pokemon. And if you don't like that lead, you get a really powerful U-Turn. It's a 70 base power bug type move. But with that choice band, it's as if it was a stab move. And that does a lot of damage coming off 120 base attack. You'll be able to switch out and bring back in whichever you want. Uh, but the final move, once again, Phantom Force, not really something I'd recommend locking yourself into, but it's the only ghost type coverage move that we have for this, or the only ghost type physical move that we have for this thing. Uh, you could try to run a dark type move. It has similar coverage, I guess. It hits, uh, ghost and psychic for super effective damage, which I believe that's the only things that ghost hits for super effective damage as well. Uh, it just has different resistances and immunities. Uh, however, you don't get the stab on that, so it's not quite as powerful as Phantom Force. So, once again, that one's up to you. Uh, if you want to run Sucker Punch, go ahead, but I would recommend Phantom Force over it any day of the week, despite the downsides that Phantom Force has. But yeah, uh, that's my thoughts on Dragapult. I think it's a really cool Pokemon. I'm really excited to use it in this format, and uh, I want to team build around it as soon as possible. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you guys want to go ahead and check out my social media links, I do have a Twitter that you can follow and a Discord channel where we're trying to get as many people in there to help us share uh, rare Pokemon version exclusives and hidden abilities. So that way, uh, as many people can get started on team building as quickly as possible. But with that, I'm going to call it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Everyone have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.